two, one. When I see the screen, I will switch. Sorry, I'm waiting for the screen to pop. Two. Go. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. My name is Abby Winograd. I am the um, MacArthur okay. Fellows uh, 40th Anniversary Exhibition. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. My name is Abby Winograd. I am the um, MacArthur Oops, Fellows. Sorry, guys. Hold on uh, one second. Anniversary Exhibition. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. My name is Abby Winograd. I am the um, MacArthur Sorry about that technical difficulty. So to start again, uh, my name is Abby Winograd. I am the MacArthur Fellows 40th um, Anniversary Exhibition Curator at the Smart Museum of Art. I'm really excited to be joined today um, by a couple of um, very important guests, but I just want to give a little bit of background about why we are here. Um, I invited Wendy Ewald to be a part of an exhibition called Toward Common Cause, um, Art, Social Change, and the MacArthur Fellows Program, which is opening in um, Chicago in mid-July, um, to work on a project um, that was uh, based in the city of Chicago. And this is partially because the exhibition explores the relationship between politics and social change. And um, we wanted to consider how art could respond to moments of crisis. And when we started this project uh, together, Wendy and I in 2018, we couldn't have possibly imagined where we would be in the beginning of 2021, but I think it's more important than ever that we have this conversation. Um, and so I just wanna introduce um, all of my friends here and, and say that uh, Wendy has been coming to Chicago when she was able and now um, remotely been working with um, 10 students at uh, Central Romero. So uh, Wendy, um, is a visual artist, a photographer who has been working with children, families, and teachers all over the world for the last 40 years. And her practice encourages her collaborators to use the camera to tell their own stories. Um, and her work challenges notions of authorship and interrogates ideas of artist intention, um, power, and identity. Jason DeLeon is also a um, an anthropologist, um, MacArthur Fellow, and professor at the University of California, Los Angeles. He is the director of the Undocumented Migration Project um, and organizer of a, a traveling exhibition called Hostile Terrains. Um, Daisy Funias is the founder and now director of Central Romero, a community organization on Chicago's Northeast East Side, uh, which was founded by Salvadorian refugees in the 1980s to uh, meet the needs of the immigrant refugee community from Central America. And Susana Salgado is the director of the youth program at Central Romero and an invaluable contributor and collaborator for the work that we've been doing with Centro for the past year and a half. Um, so what we'll do now is I'm gonna um, turn it over to um, the team to, to play a video that will show you a little bit about the work that we've been doing with Centro and, and um, feature the kids who Wendy and Susanna have been working with. And, um, we'll come, and when we come back from that, we'll, we'll discuss uh, a little bit uh, the relationship between these four wonderful people and the work that they do um, every day. to the Eating Life and Drinks During Pandemic Art and Photo Exhibition. Central Romero and their students collaborated with Wendy Ewald, Columbia College, Chicago and Smart Museum of Arts, part of the Toward Common Cause Art, Social Change, and the Mark Arts Fellow Program for so this work is um, going to be part of a citywide exhibition uh, called Toward Common Cause that will open next summer. So we're, the, these young people who are working with the artist Wendy Ewald will continue to iterate on the work they made here to do a large scale public installation that will be presented in the city next summer. My name is Sudair Antoro and I am one of the 10 students from Centro Romero that worked on this project. This past summer, we worked in Centro Romero for five weeks regarding this project, and it was overall a great experience. I got to see the world around me through the eye of an artist. We were brave enough to participate in the project, and then hopefully you guys, you know, later on we can continue, you guys can have a camera. Maybe the goal might be that everybody, all the youth have a camera in their hands so that they can, as Julie said, see the world through the, the, world through the lens. When uh, Columbia 
here and everybody brought the, the professional studio downstairs in the basement and you can see the sparkle in the youth's eyes when they were able to see that and experience that first time. Um, those are some of the pictures and the, the moments that uh, I think that they enjoy uh, a lot. So thank you so much. Susanna, I, I think we can turn it over to you to tell us a little bit more about the project um, and, and the experience. And Wendy, it would be great if you um, if you both could you know, speak a little bit about how this project developed and, and the, um, you know, the impacts of, of the pandemic on the work that you plan to do and the work that we ended up doing um, over the summer. Yes, thank you. Wendy, do you want to do you want to start um, where the idea came from? You're on mute. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, well, when Abby asked me to work on the project, I, I had been working for the past, um, I don't know, 10 almost years with immigrant and refugee communities and in different places um, in this country and in the UK. And um, so I, you know, was very interested in the historical Mexican community that was that was in Chicago, and um, and thought it would be interesting um, to build on that and important to build on the work I had done with um, a community organization in, in in Chicago. And we met uh, Susanna er early on, and I was incredibly impressed with the work that they were doing doing which was both you know legal and cultural and and sort of served the whole the needs of the whole community and the whole person um so it would seem like a natural um partnership and um but as as Abby said what what ended up happening was very different than what I had hoped and it and it was very difficult for, for me anyway um and because I couldn't be there and so much depends of how I work um you know making relationships with people and and uh being there and understanding how things work but you know Susanna and 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 Veronica really helped you know, create this space that we could that we could um, connect as much as 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 we could, um, and um, and it really became about something else. It became about you know what was happening in their lives right now, which had a sort of struggle and 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 blankness in a way because of you know their confines, and um, so it was very interesting to. Um, to work in that space and work with them and to, to, to get the kids out and looking and um, in a different way. So I'm really grateful. Um, uh, we couldn't obviously have done anything without your help. Yeah, and we're we're thankful for everybody um, because you know that you guys provided this opportunity for all of our youth. One of the things that we try to do is expose our kids to different activities, um, you know, and exposing them to photography to this project has opened their mind. Um, uh, and as Wendy mentioned, you know, it was a struggle. We had an idea at the beginning of how it was going to work. And then the pandemic happened um, and we had to be creative. But one of the things that I do want to highlight is that although we had an idea um, after talking to the youth, we, we, we changed, right, the idea and the project. Now it's being led by the youth. Um, you know, it's what are, what are they, like Wendy mentioned, right? It was about the immigration, you know, it was about um, their life. And now it's 
their life with COVID, <laughs> what's happening with COVID, <laughs> right? And what, what has changed. Um, so, so I really thank Wendy and, you know, Veronica and the youth workers, the support from everybody uh, uh, to have the social distance, you know, masks and everything. Uh, uh, but we're also doing a lot of um, activities like going out on a, on a field trip, on a walks, community walks to take the pictures. Um, they're taking pictures at home as well. Um, meeting with Wendy through one-on-ones, but at the same time through Zoom, some of them here, some of them at, at, um, at their homes. Um, but um, I, I really thank Wendy and everybody because they have given them that opportunity to express themselves um, and the project to be led by them as well. I wonder if Jason and Daisy, you want to talk a little bit about, um, you know, visuality and why it's so important for these for these kinds of collaborations and maybe Jason you can say or, or Wendy you can say a little bit about how you two work together and um and why you connected but I know you know in our all of our conversations this question of visibility and invisibility and giving you know um the immigrant community but the undocumented community as well uh, a kind of a, a way to advocate for themselves which is at the heart of wendy's practice um which is why this was a, such a good fit um in terms of trying to bring together an artist and a, a community activist and um it's a lot of questions in one but i wonder if if either of you want to jump in or wendy if you have something to say on that score Well, as far as Jason and I go, I mean, we, it, it, this was sort of, um, you know, uh, we knew about each other from before, um, but we had only met recently um, at a MacArthur meeting. And then, but like so many meetings when you, you know, think you know somebody through their work, um, it, it was, um, there were just a lot of ideas and thoughts generated. Um, and um, so we're, we're hoping to make a trip to Mexico in uh, as soon as we can get there and go to Chiapas, which concerns both me because that's where I worked in, in 1991 and, um, and, and Jason because of his border work. You want to say something about that? Yeah, I mean, we we were supposed to have already been there and come back. Um, That's right. <laughs> so now we are still planning to go there and and do some things. And um, you know, uh, I think Wendy and I both share this you know sort of passion for finding ways to give people the tools to tell their to tell their stories. Um, and you know, we we had this conversation before about. There's this phrase where people say, you know, it's about it's about giving a voice to the voiceless, and I think that neither one of us sort of buy into that. We think it's more about, um, you know, giving people tools so that they can control the narrative and that they can speak for themselves, and that we don't have to be the gatekeepers for their voices, which I think too often, um, you know, can 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 be the case. Um, and you know, I think from for you know, so we our plan had been to go to Chiapas to work with youth there to be thinking about how these communities were experiencing migration, um, both because family members had been leaving um, or they themselves were potentially getting ready to leave. Um, and then also how, you know, places like Chiapas are directly impacted by uh, a ramping up of border enforcement by Mexico with the support of the United States um, and the way in which, um, you know, Mexican migration now is deeply intertwined with Central American migration. Um, and so I, I've worked in Chiapas since 2015, largely with, with Central American migrants coming through and trying to understand you know how people experience Mexico as a place of crossing, the tensions between between Mexicans and, and Central Americans coming through, but then also finding ways can, can we um, help those folks to then to then you know describe their own experiences to, to the world. And you know for me, the the issue of like the, of the visual is so crucial because I I, I find that it really is. Um, you know, it's, it's incredibly accessible. Um, it transcends language. Um, I think that it allows people to to show their perspectives in ways that's easily understandable for for folks who might not speak Spanish. Um, and uh, you know, so for me, it's it's always been a really um, interesting and, and and powerful tool, and also one that I think that that the youth really um, it's just an amazing thing to see them 
pick up a camera and then go and, and document their lives. I mean, for me, it's, it's just a very humbling and, and inspiring thing to see. And so um, eventually Wendy and I will get back to Mexico and, um, and, and begin to do this. But, you know, but part of the issue too, part of what we wanted to do was really just was to connect Chiapas with Chicago, um, yeah. you know, because of these, these, these long-term historical relationships. Yeah. So Daisy, I, I would love to hear from you a little bit. We can hear about the the history of Central Romero, but obviously, you know, Jason's project and, and the geography um, corresponds to the work that you do um, that, that you've historically done in Central America, but also to, you know, the experience of of um, recently arrived immigrants now and how um, it's a changing landscape. And you know, this was this kind of question of a migration crisis was an urgent issue when Wendy and I started talking about this. This project, but it has become increasingly urgent over the past three years. But you know, even more difficult in 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 the pandemic. And I, I wonder if you can say a little bit about that. And then maybe Susanna, um, you know, this this idea of you know letting people tell their own stories and how the the the, the kids have experienced that and what's that that's meant over the last couple of months. That would be great. I um, I mean thank you. I think it's a it's this is a very important topic for us because Central Romero was founded for immigrants and refugees, and the idea was not to speak for themselves, but we are refugees ourselves who founded the institution. So the difference is that somebody will do it for you as a you part of it. You have your voice. You have your commitment. So this is when we're talking about immigration. This is where we're talking about human rights because uh, it is important for those immigrants and those kids that are in cages, that somebody who is outside will speak and don't forget them in the process. People who's not, who've been dying of COVID at this moment, who have not received any type of support. We're talking about immigrants themselves and people who've been here for two decades, living in this country, working legally. And now with the, uh, previous, uh, but still in the moment, the administration, we are always a target. So what can we do, right? So our kids, I mean, if the parents are suffering, of course, of course, our young kids are also suffering because they receive the environment, they live in the same space. So we see this as this type of collaboration opportunity for the kids to express themselves through uh, their art and be appreciated where, where they can become. So nurture their skills, nurture what they have, and see there's a potential for them to become the new leaders in our community. Because we're old, we are in our way out somewhere, right? So we need to leave a legacy. So our kids, when they come to Central Romero, not, lo- not only they have help with, uh, with their homework, their assistance, but also they have an opportunity to communicate with others, to help give and have a voice. I think this, this is where we give them an opportunity to say, this is, this is you are part of that community. You're not just a, ki- a kid or a child. You're part of our community. So do things that will help you, but it will help others. So that's the idea, right? So create this community where everybody can be acknowledged, but also uh, don't forget those ones that are still there and we need to change policies immigration policies that would be benevolent to immigrants and not part of them as unwelcome immigrants or refugees. Yeah, and as Stacy mentioned, right, we want to nurture their skills um, and we want to make sure that they have, um, and J- Jason mentioned it, right, we don't want to be the voice of them. We want them to use their own voice. Uh, and, you know, it might not be speaking, <laughs> you know, literally using their voice, but they can de- definitely do it through writing, through art, um, through photography. And I'm going to share a couple of the pictures that our youth have taken to th- where they show their um their voice. So for example, we have Adriana here who take a, a picture of her mom's feet. Um, and the text goes that um, you know, she acknowledges the work that she's done. She got home from work um, and she was tired. Um, so she, she decided to take a picture to acknowledge all the effort that the mom does. Community for all. Um, this is another one. Um, and then we have also uh, angels. He shows his faith through his pictures. 
Mm -hmm. And also his hopes of ending COVID. Muerte al virus. <laughs> um, so, you know, through art, through pictures, they share that. Um, we have another one here with Dolores, de la, Dolores Huerta, right? A rebel, an activist, a feminist. Um, so everybody shares their, like, like Daisy mentioned, they, they're in, they get affected. Our families are getting affected by everything that's happening around them, their environment. Um, sometimes they don't know how to express themselves, but they do take pictures and family separation. So, you know, um, and we also do a lot of different activities with them, depending on their their age, we usually tell them there's no age limit. Uh, you, doesn't matter how old you are, you can definitely express yourself. Um, you always, and you can make a difference in this world, right? It can be by cleaning the streets, going out and picking up garbage. Um, during the summer, they planted a, a garden, a community garden to clean, to have our streets clean. We've gone to rallies downtown, immigration rallies, DACA, TPS. Uh, they have talked to um, uh, state representatives about their situation. Um, so everybody can, you know, um, that's one of the things that we try to work with our youth, giving them the two, their social skills, their leadership, develop their leadership skills so that they can, um, you know, have those tools and, and speak for themselves. A lot of them come from immigrant families. Me, myself, I was a program participant of the youth program back in the 1996, around that age, you know, then, like, as Daisy said, we're a little bit older now. <laughs> Uh, but I, I usually say I'm a product of Centro Romero, right? Because I was part of Centro when I was in school, in high school. Um, you know, and it doesn't matter, you know, sometimes we see our families going, walking together for a rally, asking for support for other families. Right now, during the pandemic, all of them, all of our families were willing to help other families. And that's something beautiful to see that within, within the Centro Romero, we have built community as well. Wendy, I wonder if you can talk a little bit about process and and how um, how you work and um, you know how that that has developed over the years. Um, and then I, I you know we can start there, but I, it would be great I think also to Jason for you and maybe for Wendy to to talk a little bit about the relationship between art and anthropology and activism because um, you know that's not necessarily a straight line that people draw but it is so central to what you both do um, and why you're working together now so it would be great um, it would be great to to hear more about that from you both Wendy, you're on mute. Thank you. Sorry, my my dog is snoring, and I really <laughs> don't want her to hear that. Um, but my <clears throat> my idea of of being an art artist really has has grown over over the years, and and uh, I have been doing this for oh yeah for fifty years or something like that. Um, but it's it's really come out of my um, desire or or my desire that I observe to see how how people um, want to pay attention to their visual surroundings and and also all of our um, all of our deep need to articulate and and communicate um, something relevant about our lives um, you know no matter where who we are and where where we are. And, um, but also uh, I, and I think like, well, I think like Jason are, are really, um, you know, looking at um, the boundaries that separate us, be, you know, separate us as, as communities by, by language, by um, political situation, by the economy, by whatever. And, um, you know, and how, and, and how the, the institutions in our, you know, governments in our daily lives um, uh, provide those barriers and how, what we can do to, um, in, with our art to deal with that. Um, and so, you know, really for me, I, I thought a lot about how we learn 
and uh, how we express ourselves with images and, um, and identifying, um, I've tried to identify those barriers that are, that are created, you know, from childhood. Um, and, um, and, um, you know, my work as an artist is also in intertwined with my work as a teacher. I never studied education, but I, I'm interested. Um, and I always thought I might be an anthropologist, but I never did study that either. I just kept making images or figuring out ways of making, making images. So when I saw what Jason was doing, I thought, oh, okay, this, this may, might have been me um, at, a different, at a different time. And um, so, you know, what I'm interested in is, is seeing the world through others' perceptions, obviously, as well as my own. And, and how can we work to, you know, to, to use what, you know what um, what we have to give um, as as artists and artists and image makers and writers and whatever to that process. Not to give a voice, but but how can we how can we share what what we have? Um, and um, yeah, so you know when I, when I started in 1969, <clears throat> I immediately saw that there was a power to the pictures that the kids that I worked with and. Um, Native American reservation took. And, um, you know, from then on, you know, it, it, it was obvious to me that, you know, that way of seeing and that way of working had to, had to be shared. And, and um, so I think that, um, I think that that is continuing to motivate me, you know, all these years later in, in different situations. Um, Jason? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, if you look at like the work that Wendy has done over the years, I think so much of it is ethnographic. And for me, the, the beauty of it is it's, it's ethnographic from the perspective of um, oftentimes, you know, kids. Um, I think that, you know, the images are so striking and are for me in a lot of ways more powerful than any type of writing that an anthropologist would have done. I mean, I think about the work in Peru, the work in Appalachia. I, you know, there's there are images that just you could not. It wouldn't matter how many years you spend there writing about this from from an outside. I think you would never be able to to capture the um, the sort of feeling that these images oftentimes do. Um, and that's always really just fascinated me. And you know, with my own work, um, you know, over the years I've gone back and forth with taking my own images or working with photographers. Um, but I've always been interested in giving cameras to to migrants, to people who I'm working with um, in in hopes of, that they can provide some some new kind of insight. And oftentimes it is, you know, it's it's much more powerful than any image that I could have made. Um, and so I'm always interested in that. You know, what can what am I missing? What am I not seeing? Um, and what happens when we when we give people cameras are there things that can show up now that um that i never would have caught and i think that there's a lot um, um to be said for that kind of approach and you know for me obviously it's been inspired by 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 the work of, of wendy and so um you know it's that's something that I, I just get really really excited about i mean and, and, and in terms of this question about art and anthropology i'm sort of at the point now where um you know, I, I try to not think about sub disciplinary boundaries. I'm not that interested in what, you know, is it anthropology? Is it art? Um, and I think that's kind of the benefit of, of post tenure. I don't have to necessarily justify myself to, uh, to folks now, um, which is incredibly liberating. Um, and I think for me is um, probably the, the most important part of that is to, is to have this freedom now to just not have to worry about defending it, you know, um, against people who would say, is it this or is it that? And just saying, you know, it just is, and it can be all those things and for me that's where the, the the power of the approach comes and I think a lot of my work lately is a direct reaction to the constraints of the academy and to say saying to folks that that I have no interest in writing journal articles or book chapters 
Um, I'm interested in books, but I'm interested in books that are accessible. I'm interested in images. I'm interested in exhibitions. I'm interested in podcasts and films, things that go far beyond, you know, um, uh, my, my colleagues or, um, you know, the people who would, who would supposedly be, be you know, peer reviewing my, my work. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm, of, I'm, of course, interested in engaging with them, but not having them be the only audience and, and how these other folks be, be sort of secondary. So for me, the kind of push towards embracing these other approaches is about accessibility, um, is about, um, you know, new kinds of audiences, taking other audiences very seriously um, and not, you know, treating them as, as, sort, of, as sort of secondary. Um, and really just, I think that there's so much to be said for trying to disseminate, you know, anthropology in new kinds of ways. For me, that's like really, really exciting to think about, okay, um, what happens if I combine this and this? Um, you know, and I think part of that came from the fact that, you know, growing up, and for my most of my life, I've been, you know, I've been a musician, I've been interested in writing, I've been interested in fiction. And these were all things that I was told by the Academy that had to be very secondary to or completely separate from the anthropology, from the, schol the scholarly kind of work. And it wasn't until I saw that those things really just informed all of the anthropology that I've been doing my entire life and informed my way of thinking about the world, that if I embraced them, then suddenly now I felt like I was I was actually doing all the things that I, that I was excited about at once. Um, and, you know, for me to, to be able to bridge those things um, is just really, really exciting. And, I'm, you know, I'm working now with a lot of students who, who come to me and say, I want to be an anthropologist, but I'm also a poet. I'm also a filmmaker. I want to take pictures. You know, can I do those things? And no one ever told me that I could do those things. I was always told that they had to be separate. And so now, you know, I think we I'm trying to to help foster you know um this new wave of students who who don't see those boundaries and, and understand that they can embrace all those things and, and it's part of their, their their practice whether that's you know ethnographic practice or artistic practice or some combination of those things um that's where I, I'm, I'm seeing the kind of most that's where i get the most excited is at those intersections easy and and susanna you know it, it's it's interesting for me to hear, you know, Jason and, and Wendy that, you know, this is the goal of the exhibition in some ways is to kind of um, break down the boundaries between exhibitions and public art and, um, you know, to do something that's interdisciplinary in the way that this um, conversation is um, and, and think about the ways um, that, you know, that Wendy has been doing since 1969 and thinking about, um, you know, this kind of er erasing um, the need to have ownership over over something that you make and that it's not just the province of of fine art museums, but that it has meaning outside of those spaces. And, and I just want to add here um, that the work that Wendy is doing um, with the students is is our, our plan is to turn that into a kind of a public project so that the students work um, that they're making collaborative collaboratively with Wendy would be a public project that is um, visible in the city of Chicago all over the city um, in the second half of, of this year. Um, so I, I wonder um, a little bit about you know, I know that at Central, right, we you use art as a as a kind of a tool in the youth program, but in, as a kind of larger experience for the for the goals of of Central and in its advocacy for immigrants. How you um, you know think about breaking down those boundaries and how this is useful for for the kind of advocacy work that you do. You're waiting. You're both waiting for who <laughs> Mike here. Uh, I, I can I can go. Um, I think that's as in may, maybe Daisy can say a little bit more about it. But I think that as um, organization, you know, we um, we've have the opportunity to use art um, to show and to express uh, in every different programs that we have. Um, some of our domestic violence women have, you know, expressed their art through books that they have created, you know, handmade books um, or, you know, through, through selling through the arts and crafts um, the, our public benefits department as well in our legal department uh, through writing, um, so, you know, we do, we do have art throughout the whole organization um, and for them to, to express themselves. Um, as we've mentioned, right, if this turns into a public um, activity or an exhibition, uh, it's something that we have talked to, to, to the youth, right? What do you want to let the other people know? 
right? It's coming, like you have this opportunity to show them what you, how you're feeling about anything, right? We've talked COVID, we've talked immigration, um, our faith, our families. Um, so I think that this is a, this is a good opportunity for them to, to show that, right? To let them know from their point of view, as Jason was saying, you know, it's a different perspective from, from other people coming from the, them actually. So they have this opportunity to show and, to, and to, to actually tell them what they want them to know. So for example, one of our, our teens, Suli, um, she was saying, I want to let them know that I grew up here. She's a DACA recipient, right? And I want to let them know that I grew up here, that I, you know, that I love this country the same way as everybody else. But I also want to let them know that I like, love to dance, my, um, you know, salsa or Hispanic music, um, that I love my family and that, you know, I want to accomplish more things like higher education, um, that I'm no different than than them. I don't want them to see me as, oh, they just came to this country or, you know, things like that. So they have this opportunity to, to show that. Um, one of the youth also programmed their camera and put it in a microwave because they wanted it to see what was the hamburger looking at when you put it in a microwave. So this has opened an opportunity for them to be very creative about what they want to show the people and, um, you know, the photographers. Um, but I don't know if Daisy wants to to mention something else about that. I think, that, um, first of all, this project, I hope it's not the only one we do, is one of many. And definitely uh, immigrants, refugees are being portrayed like people that is undesirable. People that come here, but what we wanna say is they bring knowledge. They bring something with you. They bring culture, they bring richness. So I think that it's easy for people to see through pictures. It's easy for people to understand it and you're not very into the arts but I think you can understand it because the same aspirations like everybody else have, like everybody wanted to, you know, to have good kids. They want to have good parents. They want to be a good citizens and through pictures, people can see it. Right. So it can be expressed also. There's not a lot of writing to be done. It's more of how do you take that information? I think Sandra Romero, what it's looking for, we have the people, we have the immigrants, we have the, the power of doing so much things. We just need the partnerships. And that's, I think this is where we come from. We come from uh, an experience that uh, everybody, when they come or arrive to this country, when they bring something and give something back and show how much they can change their family and support of families around us, not only themselves, but reach everybody else, right? So, and what I say to us, to one of our families who was um, deported, they just come through the border and one of their child, they bring a, a new kid with them. They, this kid was afraid and he was afraid of everything. And the only the only place they received support because their client of Central Romero, it was Central Romero feel like a space they can express themselves. And I think this is where, I think this is where partnership work, not only with the students, but with the university, their partnership, sometimes, they don't know how, they just need a tool. And I think this is where we need anybody's help, everybody's help. So we need to nurture our new leadership. We need to nurture our kids, our new generations, our students that are becoming new professionals, right? So they can join board members, they can become a board and create institutions such as Centro and support them. So uh, I can talk about Lara Sandra Romero, but uh, what I can say is uh, we are so happy to work with uh, Wendy and definitely I would like Jason to come over to Centro Romero and visit us and see what we're talking about. Because when you leave the experience and you see what we're talking about, it's, it's easy to say, yeah, I want to be part of it. I want to help. And I think that uh, this, is the, this is the opportunity for us to be in this, uh, in this platform today. Is inviting everybody to walk in, help those they need it most, and be part of the change. That's all that we're asking. Yeah. And I think that's a great question for, for Jason and for Wendy, as, um, and, and then we'll start to get to some questions in the chat. But um, 
you know, this question of collaboration and, and, and interdisciplinarity, obviously, Jason, you said how that's been so important to your work and Wendy, I know it's important to yours, but um, I wonder what kinds of organizations you find are most receptive to, to what you do and, and, and which aren't and, and your hopes, what you've learned over the years, Wendy, in, in doing this um, and Jason, the same for you. We lost Wendy's video. She'll be back in a second. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's not, it, it often surprised me, you know, the, the organizations that, that I've worked with that, you know, that's, you know, that we're not necessarily alike. Um, like if I'm working with a, with an organ, try to work with an organization, sometimes that's a, a cultural or artistic organization. It's less interesting to me. Than, than to work with an organization like Centro that is that has um, you know it, it's broad and and it's and it's looking at the at the whole community and and um, it includes you know law and activism and and cultural um, but um, so so it's it it's sometimes you know or or, or an organization that, that works with children. I mean, that's okay, but it's not necessarily the only thing. And, and I think the, um, you know, like we're talking about interdisciplinarity, I think that the, the more people that come together from different, um, from different backgrounds, from different, um, you know, academic backgrounds, um, the more interesting it is, the more we have to give to each other, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I think that it's it's somewhat ironic as somebody who works, um, you know, who's worked as an who's been an academic and also now as a curator that arts institutions and cultural institutions and the and the academy in particular are um, some of the most resistant to this kind of change um, mm -hmm. um, and most, um, you know, really embedded in certain ways of thinking. And I, you know, Jason, I, I wonder if it, it's really, um, you know, how to you both have been involved over the, your careers and kind of trying to, to crash through those particular gates and, and whether you think that that's changing at all now or if it remains um, entrenched thinking. Well, I've never felt more artistically constrained than when I worked directly with some unnamed art museums. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, who were like, you can't do that. That's not going to fly. And me being like, well, I, yeah, <laughs> getting a lot of pushback from things that, um, you know, and then, and then me in the beginning being like, oh, well, they must know more than me because they're the big fancy art space and I'm just yeah. some, some clown who, who now thinks he's going to make an exhibition. And it wasn't until many years of arguing and and trying to come to some um, agreement about stuff that I realized that that you know there's a lot of um, um, conservative um, ness in some of these spaces that and the, and people are you know they've got their own agendas they've got their own ways in which they think that, that how things should be done mm -hmm. and it it may not jive at all with 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 my approach or with the approach of the people that I work with um, you know or the idea yeah I mean the experiences of migrants um, you know for me oftentimes you know some of these spaces are like well, that's too much. That's too intense. And I'm like, well, that's how people experience it. That's it. That it is a traumatic. Oftentimes, you know, it's um, it's often traumatic and challenging, and it's not um, it's not this clean kind of easy thing. And so, people don't people who are who are invested in having their stories told don't want it to be whitewashed. And so, um, you know, we've over the years had to have to have had interesting conversations with with some galleries and spaces about what we could or couldn't do. Or they take it the, in the opposite direction where they don't have a sensibility about, you know, a sensitivity towards the people's experiences of, of migration. And so they might have they might want to do stuff that 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 these migrant communities would be like, that's completely, you know, in, in, inappropriate. And they're not consulting with those folks to get that kind of feedback. Um, that's been an interesting thing, but you know, working with with nonprofits, with migrant shelters, and other groups, um, you know, the way that we always approach is we come in and we say, look, 
We want to do these are things that we're interested in doing that we think might be interesting and and um, and and useful. But you need to tell us what is going to be the best use of of our time in your space. How can we best help your community? Um, and you know, we've I've, I've just been people are so open. I mean, they're just excited oftentimes just to have some new, fresh approach come in, um, especially one that's, you know, we're not trying to be, you know, um, we're, we're not arrogant about it or, you know, we, our agenda is, is minimal beyond our agenda is we want to, we want to figure out a way to help you in this space. Um, but we need you to tell us what, what, what that's going to look like. And, you know, people have just always been so gracious and, um, and really just open to, you know, to collaborating. And we're working on some, on some new, some new exhibitions where, um, you know, right now with, with, we have a current exhibition, Hostile Terrain 94, that is, there's about 20 shows up and another 120 shows will go up um, sometime this year, we hope, um, which are deep collaborations with, with different communities. But with those ones, we sort of, we bring part of the exhibitions already built and then folks are sort of building around that and, and adding their own and adding pieces to it and, and collaborating in that sense. But we have a new, a new exhibition that we're starting to develop after that, which will basically, we will start and we will do every single step of development and, and design in house with collaboration with them, with migrant shelters, with migrants. And so we, we come and we say, we want to put on a show. What is that going to look like? And then now let's spend the next month figuring out, you know, how do you want to design it? What's the best use of time and space here? Um, and so I'm, we're really excited for those um, types of collaborations because, I mean, I think that in those spaces, people don't have. Um, you know, a particular artistic agenda or the, the hangups about like, it has to look like this or it has to look like that. I mean, they've never done it. We've never done it. And so I think there's, there's a lot, a lot more freedom in those, in those kinds of scenarios. Yeah. I, I'm, there's so much more to say, Jason, about you, you know, who the we is and what the um, exhibitions are. So I asked um, my colleague to, to put those uh, links to that information in the chat, because I, I see that we're coming up um, close to time here, but I, I wanted to ask Wendy, there was a question in the, um, in the chat about how your process and, and, you know, kind of the editing of images and sequencing of images and how, how much that um, affects narrative, the development of a narrative um, in telling a story. And, and so we'd, they'd like to know, this person would like to know a little bit more about how you um, help participants with this and, and how they, how you teach them or work with them to to understand the role of of this and you know kind of sequencing and images and in, in in developing their own image making practice. Yeah, well, that's that's something. Well, it sort of ties into also. I wanted to say about where we are now in in what we're doing, and um, um, one of the things that's uh, that I think is going to be extremely important in this in this project. Um, eventually is is to work on that narrative and um, and taking I mean th there's many different ways of, of, of doing it obviously um, but I've always worked with with words and pictures and um, and there are strengths in both of them and they both do things when they're put together with with the others and so that they understand that, that if they want to use a caption or or a you know a, a bit of text, like when we were talking about those shoes um, that Susanna was showing us, um, the the, the flip flops of her mother, she wrote a beautiful just line around them, um, talking about you know the end of her mother's day, um, and and I think that this I mean what I'd like to do and hopefully it will happen. <laughs> but we don't know is is to is to make with them to make some sh little stories that tell the things that they're concerned with but you know figuring out what what they want to use for those stories do they want to use um do they want to start with pictures and make a story out of pictures and then add a narrative do they want to write a narrative so it's kind of playing with 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 all those things to see what happens. And, and if all goes as, as I imagine in my mind at this point, <laughs> it, it, it then could be something that's in the trains or, or you know, something that's a, a linear, has a linear space that, that people you know, are in and they're, you know, have time to look around. And so it would sort of be part of the, the daily life of the city, but it will be a moment in, in their lives that they're sharing. 
or a short story that they're sharing. Um, so um, yeah, so my my process is really different in different situations, um, depending like you know when we're talking about the the, the virus and and uh, moving from immigration, the main topic to the virus, you know, you have to be obviously flexible um, and see try to see as as much you can as much as you can what is going on and what makes sense and that's why it was so hard to do it virtually for me because it was like I had you know blurry lenses and uh, um, so I wasn't able to see as well as I as I might have, but, but then we'll be there again. I'll be there again soon. And um, we just learned that uh, New York is starting to, as of today, give the virus to 65 year olds. Vaccine, <laughs> the virus. I always say the virus. <laughs> I just think for the same thing. <laughs> yeah, the vaccine. So, you know, maybe I'll be there sooner <laughs> rather than later. And, um, and then also working with with Jason, I'm I'm really excited to go to to Chiapas and go back and see see what it's like now um, since 1991 and work with those folks um, there, and um, and then bring that work together with with the with the work that the Centro kids have have been doing, and um, and also we're um, excited to hopefully to work with a with a poet in Chicago, who yes. has been writing about the Popol Vuh and um, quarantine, yes. um, and um, so I think there's a lot of um, you know there's a there's a there's a lot to to look at and and mm. to figure out how to look at it, where to put it, and. Mm. Um, so there's another question for you, Wendy, that's related. And I, I would actually expand this question for everybody um, to, the question is for Wendy is, you know, what, what do you think, uh, what do you want people to know about your work that usually gets left out of mm -hmm. exhibition text or books? And I, I think um, we could ask the same question of Jason, which mm -hmm. is, you know, what do you want people, how do you people want people to understand your work versus how um, maybe it's introduced? And I think the same can extend to our, to the ladies from Centro. Um, you know, what do people, what are the kind of, um, you know, misconceptions about what you do that our impediments and and that you want people to know about the spaces that you inhabit. So I'll ask, every, I'm gonna start with Wendy, but that's a kind of an open question. Yeah, that's a very interesting question because I, I mean, it, some of it relates to to power in a way that, that who, um, who has the right to, to speak um, and for themselves, for whom, um, and who has, um, what, what value is attributed um, to work? Um, and one of the things I've always struggled with is, is that I think that the images that the students I work with are as valuable or as, as any artist, I mean, you know, there's, and when I was talking about before those barriers between, you know, what gets appreciated and what doesn't get appreciated. And so I feel like that's with my work as well is that I don't want it to be seen as um, something that is only helping, you know, the immigrants or helping the refugees, but it's helping the rest of the, uh, the rest of the world you know, to understand, to be responsible, to appreciate. Um, so that's sort of. And, and I'm sorry, and if I can jump in just to add what with what Wendy's saying, I think that that's where, um, you know, the fear of the other people or other ethnicities comes into the lack of knowledge, right? And I, one of the things that I will hope that this project does is that it tells others that um, we have we're similar we have a lot of us have the same beliefs same values um you know same um culture um or you know and then for them also to to appreciate that the diversity that comes within that um so so that's one of our hopes too <laughs> that um you know people get to know our our immigrant and refugee community and that 
we might, you know, we might have equal um, equality, you know, equal things that we do and believe in. Mm -hmm. Jason. Yeah, I guess for me, um, a part of it is getting people to, I think oftentimes the critique of, of, of my work is that it's this political project that is seeking to change people's minds. And, and my response is everything is political. Even the projects that are overtly apolitical, that's a political decision to remove politics from this discussion. Um, and I think that um, oftentimes people can be dismissive of, of stuff by pulling that. So why does it have to always be political? And it's like, well, because it is, because it all is. Art is political. Anthropology is political. Um, but rather than, you know, so I think oftentimes people will use that as a way to be dismissive of something, as a way to say, I don't, that's not something that I'm, that I'm sort of interested in, or I'm not here to have you change my mind kind of thing. I'm not interested in changing minds. I'm interested in, um, in sharing people's experiences and I'm interested in showing them how the word the world actually, you know, looks and then and challenging narratives around, you know, what it is to, to migrate and what those experiences are in hopes that people can be exposed to these things and feel like they are challenged and then make a decision about how they want to feel about this stuff. Um, I think oftentimes it's just too, um, the interpretation can be, can be, can be too sort of simplistic. And so I, I've tried very, very hard to, to complicate that narrative. And sometimes I think people don't, aren't paying enough attention and they sort of miss, they sort of miss that point. Um, but like, you know, I'm working on a project right now. Um, like my first book was about migrants um, crossing the U.S.-Mexico border through Arizona. Um, it very much was about those, about people's experiences on, you know, on the ground. And, um, and I think in a lot of ways, if you say to someone, um, you know, I'm writing a book about migration or about migrants, it, it's pretty easy to be sympathetic towards migrants because I think most people are at least up, a good portion of people can 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 see those people suffering and 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 sort of empathize with them. Although recent elections have shown us that several million people in this country could care less. Um, but you know, I think that there's there's more than just like um, sympathizing. I, I'm not here to create a, a sympathy project. You know, I, I it's not like um, I don't. And, and the people that I write about don't want sympathy. I think they want to be understood, but they don't want to be felt sorry for. And so um, I'm trying to to push against that narrative and, and, and make it more complicated. And my current project is about um, is about smugglers, which is the, the, the kind of opposite of that, where you say, oh, I'm writing about smugglers, and people say, well, those are the bad guys. Um, those are the people who do bad things. And of course, you know, I want to respond and say, well, they're caught up in a bunch of horrible stuff. They they will do bad things, but nobody chooses to be a smuggler. You know, um, they don't fall out of the sky. They are part of this much larger political and economic process that creates the needs for smugglers, that creates different forms of violence, and people get wrapped up in those things for all kinds of different reasons. And so I want people to kind of think about those individuals also in a, in a way that's not so black and white. Um, and so I'm really, I think for me, um, it's oftentimes that the projects are read as like this sort of liberal leaning, um, dogmatic kind of thing. And for me, it's, it's really the, the world of migration is much more gray and I want, and I'm, and I'm very interested in the stories that complicate that, that narrative so that there's not, you know, just the, the simplistic headline, um, but you know, something that, that's perhaps more, more nuanced. Yeah. I, I mean, so we're, we're three minutes to the hour, so I'm going to wrap this up and I, I, you know, just to say, um, you know, this, this is also a, uh, um, a question that comes up certainly in, in artistic institutions and cultural institutions about, you know, um, being accused of the relative value of, of projects that seem explicitly political or that acu are accused of being explicitly political. And, and my general response to that is, you know, that we're not, um, we're not forcing people to have to come to certain conclusions, but rather that um, you know this is this is this the subject of this project, and it forces a reckoning with something that you otherwise could claim not to know about, um, so that the conversation is more important than the than the changing of people's minds, but also that. Um, I think that's often a claim made by folks who prefer not to know because it, but that, you know, ignorance does not equal innocence and that if you choose not to know something or choose not to be aware of it doesn't mean um, that you aren't complicit in, in the activities that make um, those processes or, or those realities a reality. Um, so, I, and I think, you know, we haven't, we said a little bit about the pandemic. We didn't say anything 
specific today about um, what happened last week and, and, you know, the efforts of white supremacists um, to overturn a democratic election and in, in, in because they're afraid of just this kind of conversation and, and what um, and the community that you all work with. So I want to thank you all for doing the things that you do and for being with us today. I want to thank our friends at um, Public Media Institute and Lumpen Radio for hosting us um, and say that as a kind of continuation of this, uh, that Wendy, the, the installation of, of photographs that the students put up at Central Romero is still there. And I understand that the exhibition has been extended. Um, ladies, how long will it be there now? Um, I believe we have the space until March. Okay. Um, if we need to keep it longer, we will, <laughs> depending on how the pandemic goes. Yeah. But it's open from now till, and you don't have to come inside. You, it's outside in our doors, uh, 6216 North Clark Street. So please come and see. Please go and see the exhibition. Walk by. Um, you can find more about, um, I know that we've put in the chat links to the work that all of these good people do. So please um, look into that. Um, and also, the, um, I'm sure my Michael, who was um, taking care of the chat, will put in the link to the exhibition um, webpage. Um, there'll be more information there. And please stay tuned for the public version of, of, of Wendy's project. And we're hoping very much to get Jason to Chicago while the exhibition is up. Um, and then I would just put in one more plug, which is for um, a project that we're also doing as part of Toward Common Cause with the artist Guillermo Gomez Pena, um, which will kick off uh, later this month, um, are also a radio program um, followed by a series of live performances. Um, thank you all so much for joining us. Um, I hope everybody is safe and be well and take care of yourselves. And um, we'll see you all soon again, I hope. Thank you. Thank you all.